Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for a very special Face It Q&A session presented by Fayette County Public Schools in the 16th District PTA. Of course, during this time, it is most important that our families and our communities engage together and support each other. The Face It platform allows us to virtually have real talk, build real partnerships, and allow real ways for us to express what we're feeling, exert our energy in a positive way, and be solution driven in our approach to whatever we're facing in our communities. I'm Sharika Smith. I work for Fayette County Public Schools. I'm in the Office of Student Support. She's awesome. And I'm Melody Westerfield, the face, the family and community engagement coordinator at William Wells Brown Elementary School. And this week, FACIC topic will focus on facing our transition, transition back to school together. And so we have some lovely guests on today with us. Um, we have a parent edition. Yes, you all, these are all parents, okay? okay? And so one by one, we are going to intro ourselves and I'm gonna start with Mr. Lewis. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my name is Antoine Lewis. I am a paraeducator, um, soon to be classroom teacher at William Wells Brown, uh, you know, hopefully next fall. So I have three children in the Fayette County uh, school system. Thank you. Um, and next up, we're going to go with Mr. Wilson. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, my name is Warren Wilson. I'm a college football coach. I have three kids in the uh, Fayette County Public School District, um, one in high school and two in elementary. So before I intro my next guest, we have two football coaches on here, right? One coaching Okay, so Mr. Lewis, you coach where? I am the head coach at Taste Creek Middle School. Okay. And Mr. Wilson, you're where? I'm at uh, Georgetown College. Okay, okay. Um, and so we also have Ms. Brown, please. Last but not least, Ms. Brown. So I am Gracious Brown. I'm behavior coach at William Wells Brown. And I have three children and one child in elementary here in Fayette County. And Ms. Brown also saved my life one day. So just to let y'all know. <laughs> I got She's a coach. Election blood. We're resourceful. <laughs> She's a coach too, just not for football team, right? Right. <laughs> life coach. Right. All right. So I will kick it off with questions. We're so excited to have you all on this evening. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, so first things first, let's get to it. Why did you make the decision to return your children or child back to school. Um, let's talk about like your thought process, your emotions uh, that you went through while coming to this decision um, and who may have helped you make this decision. Is there anyone on who has returned their kid back to school? I'm kind of split, so I can kind of answer I'll both. I'll take that one. Um, I have one daughter in middle school who is not returning. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have my a daughter in high school um, and one that uh, my niece is returning as well at Frederick Douglass is where they're going. Um, it was a tough decision, to be honest with you. And that decision, uh, when Ms. Westfield first asked me to do the show, I was like, no, they're not going back. And that's where I was at. And then literally in the last three or four days, it just kind of came full circle. Um, and my niece actually asked me if, you know, they could go back in person and you know, one of my worries was the, her, her grades slipping. Uh, you know, I asked her, I said, so what happens when your grades start to, you know, slip? Um, so I was still against it, but it was her answer that kind of turned me the other way. And, you know, she, she asked me, she said, well, what happens when my grades don't? Mm, so, yeah, it was a good comeback. It was like no hesitation. It was a good comeback. Um, so I had to, you know, I felt like I had to go home and at least think about it and talk about it. Um, I know, you know, the pandemic has kind of put a damper on things when it comes to returning to school. Um, so in my mind, like I wanted them to stay home because it didn't hurt um, our family like most people view the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it kind of, it helped me see the gap that, you know, when it came to education between my, just as a parent, Mm -hmm. And, you know, my own kids, oftentimes we get to thinking about 
you know, oh, our kids are making the grades, so they're doing good, but there's still, there's more to it than just making the grades. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic and them being home virtual actually helped see that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was actually my niece that, you know, kind of flipped me when she said, you know, when she says, well, what happens when, you know, my grades don't fall? Yeah. Well, that tells me, you know, we've done something right during virtual that, you know, you've picked up some skills to kind of, re you know, guide yourself along while you're in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that reminds me, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Wilson. No, you're fine. Um, I have one that's uh, returned back to school. Um, he's the high schooler. So in that situation, we had already went through the whole football season. Mm. I really didn't think it could get any worse outside once you played the whole football season. So uh, we returned him back to school. He's also a baseball player. So that was a huge factor in that. I mean, trying to get him from the house to practice, mm -hmm. especially being um, out of district, mm -hmm. is one of those deals where it was more convenient for him to be at school, be around his peers, mm -hmm. easy transition to go from class um, into sports activity afterwards. Mm -hmm. The other two are still learning virtual. One of them is at home. The other one is learning actually at his daycare. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it's one of those deals where as parents, me and my wife talked about resources and our daycare happened to have a um, several teachers that have been retired school teachers. And this is his first year in kindergarten. So, you know, she happened to be a teacher that was retired from kindergarten. So what better place to have them um, in a, a closed off location for school probably about four or five people in it and him being able to get everything he needed just like he was in school mm -hmm. even though he was doing it virtually mm -hmm. um so for us it kind of worked out that way right yeah that's awesome sugar you was gonna say something well when mr lewis was talking about his niece um I, i'm sure you all have heard the quote you know well what if i fail mm. and then the response is well what if you fly so mm. that's in a nutshell exactly what she said and it's that powerful, was good you know? that was good so, that was really, caught me by surprise. I'll be honest; like it was, <laughs> it was not expecting it, um, especially because I'm I'm hardcore. I'm like you mm -hmm. know, it's, everything's a regiment for me <laughs> in my household. So when you know she said that, I'm like, oh, okay, got a little, <laughs> got a little something now. <laughs> Use me. <laughs> yeah. So gracious, we're not gonna keep you out of the conversation. We know. Well, I know well, that you. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, you. Ahead, I'm you. Sorry. No, you're good. Like, so I know that you chose to have, um, to keep your, your, your one kid that's in school home. So go ahead. Same question. Um, you know, why did you make the decision? What's the process that you went through? Like, how did you, you know, come to the decision that you made to keep him home? So our concern, um, was health first. We have a child who um, was born with a heart defect. And so we're very um, um, cautious when it comes to anything health related. Um, so it could have been the flu season, a stomach bug going around the schools or anything like that. We try to be um, careful um, with our other child. Mm -hmm. um, and so the one who is in school, our concern really was messaging at the federal level around um, messaging changing around um, safety protocols um, or you know however long we're going to be experiencing this and obviously that trickles down to the local level and although there I was on um, our schools committee for um, developing um, procedures for our students to return safely. And I felt very comfortable and confident with being part of that process as an adult. Um, but I wasn't sure about um, what that would look like in my son's school because he doesn't attend the school that I'm at. And so we were concerned with health first. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a very supportive family in that um, child care, we can reach out to different people to support us with child care. So we're very fortunate with that. Um, and lastly, he, um, he lives in the home ed with educators. So he doesn't have um, some of the gaps academically that we were, would have been concerned about, um, let's say with one of our other children, um, with him returning to school and getting in-person support. Um, his school um, has a great uh, student support team and that they've reached out 
went during virtual learning to ask how his social emotional well being has been, if he needed any academic support. So we've been communicating back and forth with the school and definitely utilizing the resources if we need it. But we felt like health was a priority for our family. Um, and then secondly, it's being educators and um, sharing with our coworkers, right? To give yourself grace. We're in a pandemic, do your best, go home and take care of your families. Mm -hmm. We extended that to his teachers to, you know, um, lighten the pressure for them that we're, we have high expectations for him, but ab above all else, take care of yourself during this time. And we'll work with you as you be flexible with our personal schedule as well. So it's just worked out with our family to continue virtual learning. Mr. Lewis, you have one that is staying home though, right? That is correct. Um, we actually gave her the option and she's more of on the, um, the, the scary, scared side of the pandemic. So she chose to stay um, at home. And like, you know, Ms. Brown said, I, working in a school, I see like, I knew how our school was set up, um, but when it came to the other ones, the other two, my two uh, kids returning, we had to reach out to the principal and see, you know, how's your dismissal process? How is, um, you know, just your classroom? How are the things that you don't think about, like the hallways? How so? How are your your is your transition? Because in from where I work in an elementary, it looks very different when you're returning to middle school or high school. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had to reach out to those principals and just kind of get the vibe from them um, and see where it was at. And so we gave them. Uh, the option. And like I said, my middle school uh, daughter chose that she wanted to stay home because she felt more comfortable. And for me, when it came, when it comes to, you know, how comfortable my kids feel, I want to err on the side of caution with them. So I will support them hundred percent. So had she wanted to go back, I would have sent her, but she chose to stay home and I support that too. Thank you. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's, it's very important for us to, re to remember and realize that there are some children who are thriving, uh, staying at home, you know, so, uh, you know, a lot of times we just hear the negative about NTI, and, um, but there are some kids who are, are doing very well. Um, and so it's good to see and hear both, both sides, because um, of course, a lot of kids still wanted to go back to school, but yeah, the ones who wanted to stay home for whatever reasons, um, we have to remember that too. Um, so thinking about both of your sides, the ones who kept kids home, the ones who let kids go back, uh, what gives you comfort in knowing uh, that everything will be okay, whether they're home working or whether they're in school? What gives you that comfort knowing that they'll be all right? I'll say this. Um, we are still learning as far as FCPS staff. We're still learning how to support students and families um, during a pandemic, right? Yes. Learning what that looks like. And so um, being part of the staff and then working with our personal concerns, my comfort is in sharing the conversations with other staff about us extending grace to the families, yeah. right? And it, or teaching the families to extend grace to themselves, right? Because you have a number of parents um, who are, overwhelmed and feeling pressured by what they think school is like and, and structuring their home exactly like it and meeting the deadlines and teaching like a certified teacher should teach and all of those pressures. I took comfort in knowing that it's really not like that because the educators are dealing with the same thing that the things that the families are. And so um, I initially started that way because I used to be a classroom teacher and I wanted my son to meet these unrealistic expectations that his teacher never communicated to me because I want my child to do well and I want him to excel. And I'm like, I don't want his teacher to think this about us as a family. And then it got to, wait a minute, his teacher is experiencing this. Not sure what her staff meetings are like, but I know that the William Wells Brown family, we're supportive of one another. And it's like, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I support you? And we reach out to district people and say, Miranda Scully last year was like, do y'all need some mental health strategy? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. So the comfort was, was knowing that the world is experiencing the same challenges that my family is experiencing. And it's okay 
if we have a challenge, right? Like there are resources available. What I don't know, I will ask and find out. But mm -hmm. um, I had to step back and not pressure my child, not put unrealistic unreal expectations on myself. But now that I've returned to in-person, um, my husband is um, in the position to work from home and they have guys day every day. So, you know, I take comfort in knowing that they're bonding. I don't know. I love it. I want to be home with them now. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, some, some of it, um, our approach was a little bit different. Um, we kind of took it as a, a learning experience. It's kind of a, kind of like the college approach. I mean, you got to govern yourself. Now with that, you know, you're going to get a guide and it's up to you to kind of modify the guide to be able to basically fit your needs. So we, um, our oldest that's in high school now, he did a great job with that, got his, uh, his grades back and, you know, he did good. He got a, a I think he got 3.8 this time, you know, so he was at home doing in-person learning. So it can be done, but he had to come up with his structure. It couldn't be our structure as a parent because he had to work that around what it was in football and how to navigate that on his own, you know? So for him, he had to kind of grow up in a different maturity level a lot quicker, but he had been groomed to kind of handle that. And um, he exceeded within that ad adversity. Now, our middle child is still at home. You know, for him, not sending him back was more of a routine deal. You know, when you get used to kind of going to class and it's starting at a certain time and then you go back in school and all of a sudden class is starting at seven, well, all of a sudden that's a completely different routine than what it was for, you know, being at home learning. So for us, the best way he was going to learn was to stay on that routine right now. You know, once you start it, stay on that routine, let him continue to do what he's doing. He's making A's and B's, you know, let's, let's leave him there. Um, and like we said, with the youngest one, he had already been going to daycare. Um, his, the resource was a, a retired kindergarten teacher being there to help him with that. Um, we had a long history with them. So for us, we knew that they were, he was going to be in the best hands possible. They were going to do everything right in order to make sure he was safe. So um, your oldest one is governing him himself at school right now. That's what he is. He's a young teenager. So here you go. First uh, trial by error experience to adulthood, you know, going into college as well. So um, middle child is, you know, still under our watch. And then the youngest one, we relied on our resources outside. Okay. Yep. Some teaching moments there. So I, you know, you all kind of touched on a lot of the questions that I had prepared for you, but I'm going to ask Gracious to answer um, what's going to make you feel comfortable. What has to happen to make you feel comfortable to do in person? Um, I think, again, um, because the, we are still experiencing some uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. And messaging is different probably like every quarter. It was shifting every month, but now let's say messaging is, is different every quarter. Um, but what I think as far as the district can do to help me be more comfortable is um, have, um, I think, and you can't, right, in every school because our, our school programs are, are very diverse. Mm -hmm. I will say that. But coming up with some sort of comprehensive plan around keeping our students safe and kind of streamlining that, stream, streamlining it as best as we can because all of the programs are different. And like I said, I'm confident in the school where I'm at because I'm one of the teachers responsible or one of the people rather responsible for keeping the students safe. I see that. I'm hearing reteachers in the hallway. I'm hearing things around um, um, appropriate hygiene, face covering, hands wash, things around keeping our students safe. Um, I'm not certain if that, if that happens the way that it does at our school, that it will happen at my son's school. Um, he's he's uh, in third grade, um, so he's old enough. Hold on one second, baby. He's old enough to recognize when he is not following those you know, procedures that we taught him at home, but he's also so young and that he'll just kind of go with the flow. And once again, brings back to the first question of why we kept him home. Our priority is to make sure that we are doing the best that we can to prevent our other child from 
having a medical emergency. So we're just reducing those opportunities for people to be exposed in our family, but hopefully they help. Okay. It made a lot of sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this next question, I, I do agree with Melody. It's kind of like a conversation and you have really hit on a lot of the things that we wanted to ask you. So um, we appreciate that. Um, how did you include your children or your child into the decision to return back to in-person? Um, I know Antoine mentioned um, that she kind of just told you, look, I got this. <laughs> Uh, did any of any other experiences with that? Like, did you have a conversation with them about what they wanted to do or was it, this is how it's going to be? How did you include your children? It, it, well, in the beginning, it was not, it was not even a question. Like there was no <laughs> going back just because of my comfort level wasn't there. Um, and so, like I said, literally we were driving home from an appointment and she, they, she was like, hey, can we go back to school? Mm, and then like caught me off guard I'm driving up Winchester Road and I'm like uh yeah I wasn't prepared for that mm -hmm. um but again like I said it goes back to her her comment you know well, what happens if I like you said if I do fly what happens if I do you know make it so for me again that was enough because I felt like that one statement said an entire paragraph worth mm -hmm of reasoning from of why I need, I could give them a, a chance. And then, like I said, that reassurance from the, you know, the principal just helped me, you know, hey, you made the right decision um, by trusting in, and just, it kind of gives them a little, hey, we, we trust you a little bit. Right. So now you, you know, make this decision. And that, and for me, when it comes to high school, it's, it's, it's key when it comes yeah. to, you know, making your kids feel like they have a little bit of an opinion. So I didn't mm -hmm. just want to shut them out and not, yeah have any type of conversation, not give them any say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has she started, has she started yet? Has she started in school they, yet? They went, the, went back Wednesday. Um, okay. And okay. the first day was great. Uh, today okay. was great. Um, so it's still kind of fairly new. Yeah. Like literally, if you'd asked me this on Monday, uh, <laughs> no, I ain't going back. And then nope. literally Monday night, Tuesday, it just kind of, happened from there okay so it, literally like i said i i went into work and i was, I was talking to miss westerfield and i was like uh you asked me and i was like no and now i like kind of flip the script a little bit so. <laughs> mr wilson i know that you have you like same question um how did you include your child in the conversation or was he included at all <laughs> mr lewis said no <laughs> uh, i mean he was included um how much of his actual opinion mattered at the time. It, <laughs> it kind of was already predetermined. I mean, you know, for the oldest one year high school guy that is playing sports, mm -hmm. you know, real, realistically, you know, me dealing with this every day and working in that profession um, from a collegiate level, there, there's no way to effectively be an athlete and not be in mm -hmm. school. There's, yeah. there's too many transportation issues. And mm -hmm. um, if you're going to let them play sports, you know, my, my approach was, you know, you might as well be in school. Yeah. Now, now, how they construct that within the high school as far as how many people in the room, how they monitor it, you know, they're going to have their guidelines. It's up to you to govern yourself and be responsible with that. So for him, it was more of a, these are the pros and the cons, but this mm -hmm. is the best reason for why I should go back. He was on board. You know, he he handled his uh, classwork from mm -hmm. an at home perspective, and we right. allowed it. We knew what was about to happen. Hey, the right. next sports rolling around. I already tried to leave from you know work at certain times and take mm -hmm. you where you had to go, and you know that's it's good that I had that luxury at the time. But the reality is that you know it's it's a headache, you know, to try to right. do so to alleviate that. It was it was the best option. He knew that he respected that. Uh, the, the the middle one, I think if he, you know, if he had his choice, mm -hmm. he would have went back to school mm -hmm. from a social perspective. I think mm -hmm. he needed the social perspective. The oldest one was in sports, so he has some social interaction. The middle one didn't have that interaction. So I think him going to school would have been the best thing for social uh, perspective. But the reality was routine wise, it would have been the worst thing uh, because he would have had to change every habit of how to get back in that routine which was going to be a more 
be a headache later on versus just, hey, let's finish the year out. And then let's talk about going back to school in person after that. And then the youngest one was already in daycare. So to him, nothing has really changed. I mean, he understands COVID is going on. But the reality is his his everyday life has been the same pretty much since COVID right. has um, started, except that he don't want to wear the mask consistently. So <laughs> now mask. Whoever does. So, <laughs> Whoever does. That's what it is. Change all of our lives. Like, I mean, I feel like I don't know anyone. Sharika, you can't even show your pretty smile. Goodness. Oh, <laughs> all of us, honey. All of us. <laughs> I will say I do understand Mr. Warren's perspective about sports because my, my niece is on the swim team at Douglas and my daughter is on the cheer team at Douglas. So trying to get back and forth, it, it, it's tough. Yeah. So <laughs> staying after school is a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, we had a great show. I appreciate, first of all, I appreciate the men being on the show, um, although it's Women's Month, um, so gracious you, but um, it's good to have a male's perspective on the show. So thank you all for joining us tonight and providing us important information and thank everyone who's watching out there. We we hope that you continue to join us um, on our Face It Live show. We want to stay connected with you and continue to build a stronger community of support for our families. Sharika is going to tell you how. Yes. Um, so please send us your pictures, your videos, your words of encouragement. Um, that we can share with each other about how you're facing it together at home or at school if your kids are back at school. Uh, we would love to highlight some of those messages on our Facebook page. Um, if you have topics that you want to see on future shows, uh, email us at any time. The email address is faceit at fayette.kyschools.us or you can text us at 859 859- I say us, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not responding. <laughs> Somebody is. 859-903-5531. I have no clue who has the other end of that. <laughs> um, I think it's our tech person back there. So oh, okay. our, there our next show will be focusing on the seniors um, checklist. Yes, you heard it here. You are, uh, are you preparing for life after graduation? So our uh, career and college coaches will be on and they're actually going to take over our show while they talk about college careers military and the gap year so you don't want to miss that that's going to be next thursday march 28th at 6 30 again here on 6 30 as always we love connecting with you and we will continue to face it together see you all soon